Hello everyone. Uh welcome back to my channel. Um I know it's been a while. Had a lot of things going on. But it's just kind of been in my spirit to do this video. Um and this video mostly is for the ladies. I'm talking specifically to my Hebrew Israelite sisters regarding a subject that I kind of already talked on a little bit, but I kind of want to go a bit deeper just because I'm seeing a lot of sin, a lot of foolishness going around. And so this one's going to be mostly about Hebrew Israelite men leading you into sin and using your common sense. Um, one, one thing I want to talk about is this whole polygyny thing polygyny versus polygamy um polygyny for those of you who don't know um is basically multiple wives um you know and i want to discuss not just polygyny but many things you know that i'm seeing so one thing i'm seeing is a lot of you Black women, Hebrew Israelite women, you're so concerned with being submissive to your husbands that you're not being submissive to the Most High Yah. You're not using your common sense. You're not using wisdom and discernment that our Father has given us. I'm seeing a lot of women being led into sin blindly and willingly. And it's just crazy to me. We have... A lot of these women who think they're being holy and submissive and trying to act uppity, trying to act like they're better than certain other women, but the whole time they're living in sin and they don't even realize it. You know, and I don't blame you by yourself. I blame both parties. I blame the women and the men. Because first and foremost, the Bible says in, in Genesis that he blew his breath and Adam, okay? And Eve is a product of Adam, right? So that means the same DNA that was in Adam, the same breath, same Holy Spirit that was blown into Adam was in Eve as well. Which means Eve had her own mind, she had her own thoughts, she had her own free will. Okay, and let's let's talk about free will for a minute. Because a lot of people believe that there's no such thing as free will. But that's false. A lot of these camps, they teach lies. A lot of these, I don't believe in these Israelite camps. I call them Boy Scouts. They teach lies. They teach there's no such thing as free will. If there was no such thing as free will, that means no one would ever sin. That means the Most High would control our minds and we would be robots and we would do everything perfectly every day and we would never stray to the left or to the right but because he gave us free will and you can see it throughout the entire bible he tells us choose life or choose death choose last time i checked choosing was a choice free will and a lot of people throughout the bible chose death a lot of our people chose death and a lot of us chose life the bible gave us free will to make our own choices he lets us choose who we're going to marry, choose um, where we live, and he gives us choices every day. Every day of our lives, we have a choice to serve him, to love him, or to choose sin. When we sin, that's a choice we make. So this whole conspiracy that there's no such thing as free will, if there was no free will, we would be robots. We will be like drones, just doing automatically doing what he wants us to do at all times. Never sinning, never messing up. But the fact that we sin means that we have a choice to do right or to do wrong. Now, just because the Most High knows what we're going to do ahead of time doesn't mean he forces us to do it. He, he can know very well what we're going to do. He knows our whole life from beginning to end. But he doesn't make us do anything. So we have to understand that the choices we make are our own. And a lot of these women are choosing 
to be with men who are not led by the most high Yah. So women think that once they get married, they think that submitting to their husband is being a doormat. And you don't have to be a doormat. You don't have to be a pushover. I'm seeing a lot of these men, you know, they watch, mostly men, mostly these Israelite men, they watch these YouTube camps and they teach lies. A lot of these Israelite camps are agents of the enemy. They are in Freemasonry. Watch their hand symbols. Watch their uh, occultic outfits. You can see the, the witchcraft right there. They're teaching lies, trying to cause division within the, the kingdom. And they're disguising it as Torah. They're descri- uh, disguising it as biblical and holy. And people who are young, people who are new to truth, people who don't have wisdom, they believe it and they fall for it and they sp- start teaching it and spreading it. So we have to have discernment. We have to really know who is for the most high and who is an agent of Satan. Because Satan, his oldest trick, he's not going to come looking like the enemy because then you would know. He's going to come looking like one of us and we have to realize that just because someone who looks like us and talks like us that doesn't automatically mean they're one of us you know you have to remember two-thirds the bible says two-thirds of the israelites are destined for destruction that's two-thirds of people who look like us that are destined for destruction so you can't trust everybody just because they look like us skin folk ain't all kin folk okay and so my point is this once women get married you know they end up with these men who trick them into having a backwards life living basically trick them into sin you got women who are working and their husbands are staying home these israelite camps these men they teach that they stay home they play video games or watch foolishness on tv uh the house is a mess and while the women are working, show me a scripture, any scripture in the Bible, where the Most High says the women are supposed to work and the man is supposed to stay home. Show me that scripture right now. Because there is none. Y'all live in backwards lives, live in backwards houses. Your homes are not in order. You can't pick and choose parts of the Bible that you're going to follow. You can't say, oh, I'm going to wrap my hair or I'm not going to wear makeup or I'm not going to wear pants, but I'm going to go to work while my husband stays home. God does not bless mess. It doesn't matter how much you pray in your house. It doesn't matter how much you do this or that. If your house is not in order, it's not blessed. Point blank, period. Okay. You can't say, um... You're being submissive when you're not following the the most high word. And these men will shame you. They will make you feel guilty if you even try to confront them or challenge them on anything. If you try to correct them, they will try to shut you down and make you feel bad. The whole time they know they're not living right. It is not right for the woman to be working and the man to be home and... And just, what is he doing? There's no such thing as a stay-at-home husband. No such thing as a stay-at-home dad. That's made up by Satan. That is a lie and a trick from Satan. You're not going to find that in the Bible. The Bible says a man who does not work does not eat. There's no blessing for idle hands, for laziness. Okay? How can you call yourself a man? How can you call yourself the head of the household? When you don't support your family, you don't bring in any financial support. Okay, that's backwardsness. God is not the author of confusion. He's not backwards God. So why would he bless a backwards home? And I'm looking at these Israelite camps and they have their women dressed like old grannies. You know, wearing dark, dim colors, old granny, old-fashioned clothes, talking about they can't wear pants. Okay, that's all good and well. Maybe you don't want to wear pants. That's fine. But you don't have to dress like an old granny, you know. And you don't have to uh, walk around like a nun in silence, talking about women can't speak. Where is that? There is no scripture that says women cannot speak. Because the Bible is full of women who are prophetesses and and 
prophesying and teaching, edifying the kingdom. You can't do that if your mouth is closed. I believe it's it's in the book of Acts. It says that Most High will bless our daughters and our sons with visions and dreams. He didn't say he's going to bless sons. He said sons and daughters. That means we have spiritual gifts as well. That women, we are not just to make babies. We are not just to cook. We are not just to clean. We are not just for sexual pleasure. The Most High has a purpose for us. A purpose that's spiritual, that edifies the kingdom. You have, And it's your job, women, to find out what your spiritual gift is. Your job is not just to be a wife, just to be a mother. You have so much more talent and purpose. So much more for, for the most high that you can be doing. And sometimes when you marry the wrong person or your your husband isn't um, being led by the most high, you can become lazy. You, you can become mundane and routine. And you forget to pick up the Bible for yourself. There's no scripture that says women can't read scripture for themselves, that women can't study for themselves. I once had a very ignorant, very extremely ignorant black man tell me that, you know, women were not supposed to read the Bible because our brains were too small. He literally said our brains were too small to comprehend. The ignorance, right? Okay. He was upset because I knew the Bible better than he did. He was upset because every time he tried to come come at me with some foolishness, I had a scripture for it. And men, wicked men, don't like to be challenged by righteous women. And women, we have to set a good example for our daughters. We have to set a good example for our sons. Because when you walk around being docile and a doormat, those young sons are going to grow up thinking that's how they should treat you. And that's how they should treat their sisters. That's how they should treat their women. And daughters are going to grow up thinking that's how they should be treated. That it's okay to let a man run all over you. It's okay to be verbally, physically, emotionally, spiritually abused. And it's not okay. That does not line up with scripture at all. You know, and, you know, get your house in order. It's not, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't care who agrees or disagrees. It is not right for a woman to work her butt off and a man stays at home all day. It's not right. It's not scriptural. It does not line up with the Hebrew Israelite custom. I don't, there's nothing you can say. There's no excuse for a man not to work. I don't care if he has to work at McDonald's or Burger King. He needs to be providing for his family. And a lot of men, you know, and I see these Hebrew Israelite men, they, the camp guys, they have their women work and then the women bring home the paychecks and the men decide how it's spent foolishly. Think about that. What sense does that make? I could not ever fathom being in a marriage like that. I will not. I, I will not go to work all day, leave my children, whether I have children or not, I don't care. I'm not going to let my husband sit around all day and then he's going to tell me how to spend the money. Hell no. He is going to work according to the most high's word. He is going to be, if he's going to be the head of the household, then he has to get off his butt and he has to prove it. Because honestly, if a man loves a woman, she would not have to ask him to work. He will be doing it willingly. He will be going out of his way to do whatever he has to do to take care of his children and his wife and his home. But these men today are soft and they're lazy and they are used to women taking care of them. And this comes back into having that worldly mindset still. And you can see that worldly mindset, not just in men not working, but also in when it comes to having multiple women. Again, these Israelite camps, they teach so many lies and they disguise it so well, like truth. They'll spit out two or three scriptures and then they'll spit pour out a bunch of lies and mix it together so it's hard for you if you're not studied it's hard to tell what's truth and what's a lie so it all sounds good right 
but it's not all good. A lot of what happens is these Israelite men, they say, oh, it's biblical. I can have multiple women, you know, and really they're just using that worldly mindset. And it's leading women into sin. They call it nation building, but it's just making a big mess because history repeats itself. History shows us that women cannot get along with other women. Women are just as territorial as men. We show it differently. We're not physically aggressive like men. We don't, you know, act out and fight like like men, uh, physical fighting, but we show our uh, aggression and our territory, territorialness, I guess, in different ways. And it's all throughout the Bible. You, you Have you ever, and I, I'll, I'll use one uh, biblical situation and then I'll use another non-biblical um, example. For example, I was in college. Uh, I went to college four years, four and, four and a half years, yes. And I have female roommates, four women, four young adult women living in one dorm okay and it was chaos year after year and it didn't matter how many you know each year we had it was different roommates but you know all women and we could not get along it doesn't matter who the woman was we disagreed on temperature we disagreed on um keeping the place clean on different chores we disagreed on how we wanted things to run i mean we just disagreed on our personalities clashed constantly for four years one woman would leave a new one would come in a new one would come in a new one would come in you know and we always disagreed and it's it's a natural thing you cannot have too many females in one space now let's look at it from a biblical point of view we have let's see we have hannah and we have panina if i'm saying her name correctly hannah and panina panina and they were married and uh, they were married to a man i believe his name was El- elkanah i have a hard time pronouncing these these bible names but bear with me they shared a husband and there was drama they didn't get along. Okay. Panina basically harassed and bullied Hannah because she didn't have kids, because Hannah didn't have kids. So Panina, who had children, constantly bullied Hannah because Hannah was the favorite. Now, how can you be a husband and how can you have a favorite wife? You know what I'm saying? How. There's there's chaos, there's drama, there's confusion. And we have to remember, Scripture says, God is not a God of chaos and confusion. So, you have those two women who were constantly at each other's necks. And Hannah, it says Hannah wept bitterly every day. She She wept. She was very unhappy. Not just because she didn't have children, but on top of not having children, now she has his other wife constantly attacking her. Chaos. Confusion. You see? Now let's go to uh, Rachel and Leah. Again, Rachel was the favorite wife. Again, more favoritism. Leah and Rachel. Rachel. At each other, throw back and forth, back and forth. Confusion, that whole situation. Again, he's not the, the author of confusion. Okay? Now let's go to, let's see, another situation. Uh, Sarah and Hagar. Confusion. Again, Sarah and Hagar, back and forth, back and forth. Now, you will see this is a pattern throughout the whole Bible. Anywhere you see multiple wives, anywhere you will see this. Why? Because it was never the Most High's original plan. Go back. Let's go. Everyone wants to talk about, well, Solomon and David and and Jacob and blah, blah, blah. That's all good and well. But let's take it even further. Let's go back to the foundation. 
Let's go back to the way beginning. Let's not pick and choose this or that. Let's go back to the very start, the beginning, Genesis. The most high created Adam. And he gave Adam what? One wife, Eve. That was it. He didn't make any mistakes. He didn't forget to give him the other two, the other three. The God most high never makes mistakes. Okay. He gave Adam one wife because he knew that's all he needed was one wife. Because one wife can take care of everything. She can bear, she can have children for you. She can run a home, a good wife anyway. A good wife, not a lazy wife. A good wife will take care of the children, keep the home in order, uh, take care of your spiritual well-being, um, cook, clean, whatever it is that you're looking for in a wife. A, one woman can do those things. One good woman can do those things. You understand? And that was the most highest original intent and purpose. That was his foundation. That was supposed to be the precedent, the example that we were supposed to follow all the days of our lives. He didn't, he didn't give Adam, Eve and Jessica and Lisa and Josephine. No, he didn't do all that. If he wanted to set an example for multiple wives, he would have given Adam multiple wives from the jump, but he didn't. Multiple wives did not come into play until after Eve and Adam had sinned. Once sin came into play, everything changed. Laws were changed, uh, you know, because they were supposed to live forever. But once they sinned, now they were on a mortal time clock. They began to age. They They got older. Um, childbirth was painful. Childbirth was originally supposed to be pain free, but because of sin, now childbirth is, was painful and that's why it's painful today. Now, Adam had to go out and till the ground by the sweat of his brow. He had to work. Whereas he, if he would have stayed in the, in the garden of Eden, he wouldn't have had to work. So you see how everything was messed up? Not just one thing. Everything was a ripple effect. Everything was affected through sin. And one of the things that was majorly changed was this whole polygamy thing. If they had never sinned, it would have continued being one man, one wife throughout throughout all generations. But that changed because of sin. You understand sin. So polygamy, multiple wives, is a product of sin. Okay, that's where that's where it was birthed from. That's where it came from. So after Adam and Eve, you'll see every generation, every descendant from them, you know, as we follow along, began to pick up multiple wives, this mentality that they needed multiple wives. Okay. They didn't really need it. It was a lust thing. It was greed. Because if you look back now, Adam and Eve, they had children. And Eve, she took care of those children by herself. She cooked and took care of her husband by herself. Okay? She didn't have a sister wife. She didn't have those, you know, uh, concubines around. Eve did it with the help of the Most High Yah. And so if Eve can do it, why can't we do it today? So what's the excuse? Why do these men need need um, multiple wives? And don't say it's nation building. Because the most high, the, you can have kids with your wife. Okay, you can nation build through adopting. You can nation build through having your own biological children with your your wife. There's lots of women, who, you know, I've, I've heard them say they have seven, eight children. I know one woman, Hebrew Israelite couple, she and her husband have, uh, I believe, 23 children, 23 children, just her by herself. There's no other women. She she birthed 23 children to her husband. OK, and I understand some women can't have children. And that's that's very unfortunate, you know, in some situations. But there's other ways, you know. I don't know. If adoption is an option or or what, but there's personally, I feel like there's no need to 
have multiple wives just for children because there's other options. And I know for a fact that these Hebrew Israelite men are not preaching uh, multiple wives for the sake of children. It's for the sake of sex. Let's just cut down to it. It's for sexual lust and pleasure. That's it. And what you have happening is these these Israelite camps, these little guys you see on YouTube, these Boy Scouts who pretend to preach the word. What you have is a worldly man disguised as a godly man. And they find worldly women disguised as godly women. So what happens is you have this worldly woman over here who was in the world. Know nothing about God, know nothing about the truth, whatever. And she has no problem being a side chick. She had no problem having an affair with a married man. She had no problem uh, taking someone else's boyfriend, whatever. She's one of those women that's a proud side chick or she's comfortable with someone else's man. She's a worldly woman, okay? Then you have, over here you have this worldly man who is a womanizer, he's been with a lot of women, he's all about sex, he um, dated multiple women at the same time, no shame. Now, this worldly woman comes into the truth, learns God, then this worldly man comes into the truth, he learns God, and he says to this worldly woman, hey, let's let's get together, okay? So now you have these two worldly people in a marriage, okay, with their worldly mentalities, and they're trying to disguise their actions as as Torah, as biblical law. And he says, "Oh, I found a loophole where I can still be a womanizer. I found a loophole where I can still have multiple women. But now, instead of calling it cheating, I'll call it Torah. I'll call it biblical. I'll call it nation building." Yeah, yeah, so I'll I call it biblical. I, I can have multiple sexual partners and I can just say they're my wives and God will bless me. And you have this worldly woman saying she's totally okay with that. She's comfortable with it because she's already used to sharing her man. So this is nothing new to her. Okay, so now you have these two worldly people calling, making, making a mockery out of God's word. Okay, because if you think about it, it's wrong in many ways. I watched a YouTube video of a so-called Hebrew Israelite man and his, I believe he had three or four wives and he was dogging one of them out, just dogging her out, calling her a dog, calling her the B word. Um, I mean, really just like saying things that no man should ever say to a black woman ever, ever. Okay. And she's sitting there, she's crying, she's taking it, right? And he's telling her how uh, she needs to grow up and because she she was his first wife, right? Okay. And then all of a sudden, he decided he wanted, out the blue, more wives, right? And this is a real, this is a real dog nigga for real, okay? He, this is a real worldly person right now, okay? And he's talking about how he wants multiple wives. And so he, and she agrees because he says, no, if you love me, if you really love me, if you really love the most high, then you, you'll submit and you'll follow, you'll be obedient. And they guilt, this is a tactic that the devil uses. They, they guilt you and they shame you. So she fell for it. So he has like three other women. So now there's like four of them, four women in the house sharing this one dude and he's dogging her. So she gets uncomfortable and she's leaving. So every now and then, you know, when the marriage isn't going right, she leaves because she's uncomfortable with these other women in her home. And so she leaves them for a while, then she comes back. And then she leaves, and then she comes back. And he's telling her, you know, dogging her, like, you need to grow up. You knew what it was from the jump. You need to get on board with these other women, blah, 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 be submissive. Just talking a bunch of foolishness and trash, right? So he goes on to say about how... They have orgies together. Orgies, okay? He has all these women in the bed with him. He's talking about, in very graphic details, how he likes to slide in one, how he's doing one while the other one's watching. And then when he's when done busting in her, he'll roll over to the other one and he'll do her while the other ones watch. Real disgusting, real nasty, real, has nothing to do with the Bible, right? Okay. So he's talking about that kind of stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, 
And these women are okay with it? These women are allowing it? This is sin. Because the Bible clearly says that it is not okay for a man to lay with a man or a woman to lay with a woman. It's not okay for us to have these unnatural relations. So you, you, these, you, you allow these men, whether he's your husband or not, whatever, you're allowing this man to lead you into sin. You're having orgies. You're, it's one, it's unsanitary on many levels. It's spiritually and physically degrading. Okay. It's not right. Don't line up with scripture at all. You naked in the bed with other women naked in the bed, kissing and rubbing and touching each other. That's nasty. That's wrong. You watching it, that's that's basically pornography, okay? I don't care if that's your husband. I don't care if that's your cousin. Well, I, I don't care. It ain't right. And you, you women, y'all got to stop letting these men fool y'all and trick y'all into thinking that it's okay. You have a backbone. You have common sense. You have knowledge. Use it because on the day of judgment, there ain't going to be no excuse. None. The Bible has taken away every excuse you can possibly think of. Okay. It's not going to be, oh, I didn't know. Oh, but he's my husband. No. Who is above your husband? You honor the most high first and foremost. Okay. You put the most high before your husband. Yes, honor your husband, respect your husband, submit to him, but only if he's being led by the Most High. Because a man who's not being led by the Most High can never lead you to to, to the Most High. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these men are agents. A lot of these Hebrews like men have the serpent seed. They are they have the spirit of craftiness because Satan has a spirit of craftiness. These men will manipulate you. They will guilt you. They will shame you, make you feel bad. And they will find a loophole. They will try to use the Bible to find biblical loopholes to get what they want at all costs. They don't care about you. They will try to manipulate you any way they can. And once they see that they can manipulate you, and they can dog you and run all over you because you won't stand up for yourself. They're going to keep doing it. That's why a lot of these women are being led into sin because they're letting these fake, ignorant ass Hebrew Israelite agents tell them it's Torah, it's biblical, it's scriptural. Our forefathers did it, blah, blah, blah. And y'all women, y'all refuse to study. For yourselves, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. You don't need a man to study with you. Pick up your phone and study. Pick up your Bible, study by yourself. It's nothing wrong with that. Because sometimes you need to study and be led by the Most High directly. Because sometimes other people can put their spin on it, can put their opinion on it, and it can be totally, and if they're not led by the Most High, it can be totally miscued. So I think that, you know, you really have to study for yourself and really have to figure it out and be led by the most high. You can't just dissolve yourself in this man, you know, your husband and lose your identity, lose your personality, lose uh, your Holy Spirit that the most high gave you just for this man, just for the sake of saying I have a husband. You don't have to be a doormat, okay? You can still have a mind of your own led by the Most High. A lot of these men are leading y'all women to hell, straight to hell, and y'all are going and running willingly just to say you have a man, and it's not okay. It's not right. It's time to wake up. We are in the last days. Look around at all these signs, yo. Look at all these signs. Y'all think God playing? We got all the hot states covered in snow, blizzards, ice. We're talking some of the, the, the hottest states that being like the 120s. Now they in the negatives. Y'all think God playing? It's time out for excuses. It's time out for acting weak. 
Because on the day of judgment, you can't say, oh, but God, it wasn't me. It wasn't my fault. It was my husband. No, everyone has to answer for their own salvation. Point blank, period. Okay. Now you can sit around and you can justify and you can make excuses. You can look for loopholes. That's all cool. That's well. But at the end of the day, the most high going to judge you. And you wondering why your life not going the way you wanted it. You wonder why you're tired, stressed out. Feel like you want to give up. It's because your house is not in order. It's because your life is not in order. Your house, your home, it represents your life. On many levels. So if you are living in a backwards house, you can't expect it to be blessed. You just can't. You can't, you can't expect a blessing to come out of confusion. You got to do your part. Get your house in order. A lot of y'all, like I said, if 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 your husband comes to you with some foolishness and a good man, a true Hebrew Israelite man of God would never approach you with some foolishness like, let me get another wife. Because that right there, it shows you where his mindset is. It shows you where his heart is. It shows you his true nature. He just revealed to you his, his, his true colors. Because a real man, Hebrew Israelite man, also wouldn't let his woman go to work while he's sitting around. True. If I was a man, you know, and I I claim to love this woman, I'm not going to have her going out in the cold or rain or just going to work when she when she don't have to, but I'm her man. But she working and I'm sitting around. I'm not contributing nothing. No. No. It just just no, okay? Y'all really need to, women step up their games. I can't blame these men. There's a lot of men out there, a lot of snakes, and they're going to try to mislead you and misguide you. But you got to have, you got to be filled up with the word enough to know that don't sound right. That's out of order. No, I'm not doing that. Yes, I love you, but I'm not doing that. Yes, I love you, but we are not doing this. You got to step up and say, hey, some things need to change. Just because you confront your husband doesn't mean you don't love him. It doesn't mean you're being disobedient. There was a story in the Bible, um, I believe, Abigail and Nabal. She was married to Nabal. And Nabal, I believe, if, uh, if I study correctly, it means fool. This man literally was named a fool, which made sense because he was acting real extra foolish, okay? And because of his foolishness, David was going to kill him and everybody in his house. But Abigail, she could have, you know, being the submissive wife, she could have said, oh, I'm just going to sit here and take it. I'm just, I'm not going to go behind my husband's back and I'm not going to fix the situation. She had wisdom, okay? She had wisdom enough to know she needed to get up off her butt and she needed to change some things and she she made it right. And in doing so, she saved not only her life, but many others. So it's not... Being disobedient, it's called having wisdom and being led by the Most High. If he tells you to do something, if he tells you to change something, then you need to do it. And we're not living in the old days where we have five years to change, 20 years to change, 40 years. Look at times are changing every day. Things are getting worse every day. The signs are coming to pass. The Most High is coming soon. You need to get your house in order right now today. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. The Bible talks about in Proverbs, a wise woman. Okay. And not just in Proverbs, throughout the Bible, you you can look at wise women doing great things. The Bible says a wise woman builds up her house, but a foolish woman tears it down. You know how you tear your house down? You tear your house down by letting your house be out of order. Not just physically tear down. Of course, if your house is a mess, your children are running wild and you're not disciplining your kids. Um, you're just letting unclean spirits in and out your house. That's tearing your house down. But a wise woman builds it up. She makes sure her house is in order on every level. On every level, okay? So you have to decide, are you a wise woman or a foolish woman? 
Because at the end of the day, there's only two kinds. And you, it's, it's up to you which one you're going to be. It's really time out for us being docile little little mice and being afraid. Oh, I'm just a woman. I can't say this. I can't do that. I can't. There's a lot of things you can do. Okay. Look at all the women in the Bible. If they said they couldn't do it, a lot of things just wouldn't get done. When it comes to black women, if we don't do it, a lot of things just wouldn't get done. Rosa Parks. Forget it. I'll do it. She just did it. Okay. Let's look at Deborah. She was a judge. She went to battle. Look at uh, Joanna. Look at um, Judith. Judith killed a king by herself. Okay. Um, there's another woman. I can't even think of her name right now. But she she killed Sisera, the king. Dropped a stone on his head. Killed him. Broke his neck. Okay. So we can't sit back and act like we're so feeble and weak and and dainty because a lot of women are taking care of business. Our ancestors, our female ancestors, they took care of business. They didn't always sit around and wait for a man to do it <clears throat> when they when they could do it. <clears throat> and you just have to have wisdom enough to know, you know, Yes, I can do this, or no, I can't. I'm not saying you should go out there and do everything. No. But get your house in order. Get your life in order. Don't fall for these lies. Study. Don't let these men run all over you. Don't let these men talk to you disrespectfully. I wish a man would talk to me disrespectfully. Not I'm not the one. I'm a very different kind of woman. Nobody going to talk to me like they're crazy. Okay? I don't care if you call yourself king or Hebrew Israelite or whatever you want to call yourself. You want to come to me with some respect. Respect is earned, not given. Okay. And we as black women, as we deserve the most respect out of anyone on this earth. We get more disrespect from everyone, from black men, from white people, from, from everybody. So if anybody on this earth deserves respect, it is the black woman. We have been holding it down since the dawn of time, okay? Since Eve. So all I'm saying is, women, stop, stop, stop acting weak and stop letting these men run all over you. Stop letting these men beat on you. Stop letting these men verbally abuse you. Stop letting these men emotionally abuse you. Stop letting these men... uh trick you into multiple wives it's a sin it's not nation building it's 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 sin it's wrong and you will be judged for it no matter what scriptures they try to use it's sin okay and you gotta stop treating your husbands like they're your sons stop babying these these men make them work that's that's all there is to it because if you, if you truly want a blessed and prosperous marriage, a marriage that honors the Most High, you would do it the right way. Because there is no backwards marriage that's going to honor the Most High. No matter how, what excuse you try to justify, it's just not. You know? And we got to stop with these beliefs that women can't teach, women can't prophesy. Because the Bible tells us time and time again that women can prophesy. The Most High is not a sexist God. He gave women gifts just like he gave men gifts. And if you open your Bible, you can read and see for yourself. You know, and a lot of these Hebrew Israelite camps really have these people confused. They tell you, you know, um, if you wear makeup, you're going to hell. It's it's wrong to wear makeup. It's not a sin to wear makeup or perfume. Okay. Yes, these were things that witches sometimes use as witchcraft, but in itself, it isn't witchcraft. Because time, read uh, in Esther, read Judith. They put on makeup and they fixed their they they painted their faces, aka putting on makeup. They fixed themselves up for their purpose for their cause. There's nothing wrong with putting on a little makeup here and there. We're talking about. Um, 
using that Egyptian style of makeup, the, the, the Egyptian eyes and the, um, using it for seduction reasons to do witchcraft like Jezebel. You have to have common sense to know what scriptures mean. You can't just read a scripture and then run with it. You have to have the precept upon precept. You have to read the whole chapter. You have to read the book. You have to study and understand what it means. You can't just read one little verse and think you have the whole story. There's a whole background to it. And people fail to realize that. You know, people get really bent out of shape when you say, oh, you wear braids in your hair. There's a whole backstory to that, which I'm not going to get into right now. But we need, as women, we judge each other, especially Hebrew Israelite women. We we judge each other. When we Once we get into the truth, we begin to judge each other. Oh, she uh, wears makeup. Oh, she has uh, braids in her hair. Oh, she's the, she wears pants or whatever. First of all, get your life in order, okay? Before you go point the finger at everybody else, check yourself. Check your life before you try to judge anybody, okay? Because you don't know everybody's personal life and everybody's business, okay? And once you study and read the Bible, you will see that these things are not evil. It's not wrong to wear jewelry, Black people, we are a royal priesthood. Our people, we we dressed in fine linen. We dressed with jewelry. We had earrings. We had necklaces and bracelets and ankle bracelets. We were not uh, slaves from the from our existence. We were not just slaves out of some white men's textbooks. We were royalty, and we dressed like royalty. We didn't walk around in old granny clothes and uh, looking like nuns and looking like ragabonds wearing grays and blacks and dark colors we wore vibrant colors and you can see that still today and a lot of our people black people and latinos and native americans we love colors we love bright colors and you can still see that in our our homes and our our clothes so when they tell you you know bright colors are bad we are not children of darkness we are children of light so that's how you you can tell that these these Hebrew Israelite camps on YouTube that they're agents because they will tell you the opposite of what scripture tells you. Why do they all wear black and gray and dark colors? If we're children of light, why are they wearing these dark colors all the time? Why are they making their women wear these dark colors all the time? If we if we are a royal people, why are we uh why are they making their women dress in raggedy old boring clothes? Remember, we reflect the most high Yah. So if we are trying to bring people into the kingdom and and edify the kingdom by bringing people in, our clothes, our speech, our hair, everything reflects the most high. Everything we do. So if I see a Hebrew Israelite woman and she's dressed, if I'm, if I'm a worldly woman, for example, and I see a Hebrew Israelite and she's always dressed in old granny clothes and she's always sad and depressed and she's always uh silent around men like she can't speak um she can never speak her mind or she you know you know the one I'm talking about you know you know how I'm talking about you know the ones we've seen that's not gonna make me want to come to know the most high that's not gonna make me want to join the the movement that's if anything that's gonna push me away further that's going to make me stay, oh, I got to dress like an old granny. Oh, I, I, I got to look, you know, raggedy and run down. I got to look 10 years older than what I am. That's not what the Most High wants. He wants us to be physically attractive and take care of our physical appearance, okay? We shouldn't be superficial and vain about it, but we should reflect him in a way that it does edify the kingdom. And... You know, there's lots of Hebrew Israelite clothes that are beautiful, that are modest, okay? You don't have to dress provocatively and seductive. You can wear beautiful, up-to-date Hebrew Israelite clothes. There's tons of websites. So I don't understand for the life of me why these men have their women dressing like old biddies. And then they call it scripture. It's not. It's depressing. It's lies. I mean... I mean, there's just so many things we need to wake up, open our spirit. We need to pray for the most high to open our spiritual eyes, open our spiritual ears. And I know I'm talking to somebody right now. I know you listen. I know you, I know you feeling it. You need to remove that spirit of fear. 
Because a lot of y'all are in these situations where you're letting your husband run all over you. You're letting your husband uh, basically tear down your house because you refuse to be in order. If you are with a man, you can't talk to him without him getting angry, without him jumping down your throat, without him making you cry, without him um, blaming you for everything. You need to question a lot of things. Is this man being led by the most high? Because the two are supposed to be one. You're supposed to be on one accord. You know? I don't know. I just feel like we really need to stop falling for the lies. Stop letting these men lead us into sin. And calling it scripture. Calling it blessing. Calling it the will of the most high. Because it's not. And I know a lot of men will like to say, well, you know, it's not a sin to have multiple wives because such and such in the Bible did. But if you look again, if you look at those those specific men in the Bible, multiple, multiple wives was only given to certain men. Not every man in the Bible, not every Hebrew like ancestor virus had multiple wives. Many of them only had one wife. And Paul talks about it. There's a reason why a lot of these Hebrew Israelite camps don't talk about Paul. They don't preach Paul's words because he spit the truth. That you're supposed to be sober. And they're supposed to have one wife. It says, husbands, be good to your wife. Wife, love your husband. Okay? Your wife, not your wives. And again, there's specific reasons that led up to why certain men in the Bible had uh, multiple wives. Abraham had multiple wives. He had um, Hagar and Sarah. But again, the only reason why he was forced to marry Hagar is because Sarah forced it on him. It wasn't Abraham's choice. Abraham didn't want anything to do with Hagar. She was just Sarah's handmaid. Sarah forced Hagar on Abraham. And because Abraham loved Sarah, he gave in. He pleased her every way that he could. So he gave in. And look how that was. Constant bickering between the two women. And confusion between his two sons till this day. The Ishmaelites and the Israelites still have conflict today you can see that you can see that confusion still resonating today from our from our people and their people from isaac and ishmaelites okay and now and then you look at jacob if jacob hadn't had those multiple women i don't know personally i believe and this is just my opinion this is what I'm going to throw my opinion here. I believe that the most high being all powerful and almighty, he could have given all 12 children to Rachel. Had things been done uh, as they were originally planned, if Jacob would have, you know, worked his seven years, you know, the first, his first seven years that he worked were for Rachel. If he would have, if Laban hadn't tricked him, if he would have worked his seven years and he would have been able to marry Rachel right off the bat, who knows? The Most High could have had all 12 children be born through Rachel. Boom, bam, period. Okay? But because Laban tricked him, he had to work 14 years, and he had to marry Leah first. The 12 tribes were divided up between, you know, Rachel and Leah and the two handmaids. So you see how things got distorted then? But I don't doubt very much so... I believe very much so that the Most High could have easily given all 12 tribes to Rachel without the second wife, without, um, I mean, without Leah and without the handmaids. All of those other things were just a product of a ripple effect of Laban's trickery. So you see what I'm saying? So it wasn't really, it's not really necessary for any of those men to have had multiple wives. You can't find one situation in the Bible where uh, any of those men who had multiple wives needed them. Why did why did Solomon need seven hundred wives and concubines? Why? 
You know for a fact he wasn't seeing all of them. He probably didn't remember all their names. He didn't even know half those kids. And a lot of them worshipped idols and were had other gods, which angered the Most High. So tell me why he needed 700. It was not to build the kingdom. No, it was lust. Every time you saw a beautiful woman, he wanted her. That's it, period. That's, that's all it comes down to. And that's the same thing and that same DNA that's in him. That's in, it's in the black men today. That's all it is. Black men have a lust problem. They love women. And now they just use it as an excuse to have multiple wives. And then they lie and, tell, and they have these women in sin because you're not all even married. You can't say, oh, I have sex with this woman. She's not my wife. Mm, yes or no. Okay. Yes and no. No, because are you legally married to the, to these women? No. Now, there's a scripture, and I, hold on, before I get to that, you know, I hear a lot of Israelite men say, well, we don't believe in the, the heathen way of marriage, blah, blah, blah. You know, we have sex, and that's that's how we consecrate the marriage, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let me just say this. We are in, well, we were, I guess. We are in our land of captivity, I guess. And we for 400 years, we were in captivity, which means we did things a certain way. Okay. So let's go back to the scripture where I believe it's in the New Testament, Matthew, I believe. I could be wrong, but I believe it's in the New Testament where they came to Yeshua, Jesus, and they said they were trying to trick him basically and get out of paying taxes. And they said, is it lawful? Is it lawful for us to pay taxes to Caesar or to the Most High? And Jesus said, <clears throat> whose face, whose inscription is on that coin? And they said, Caesar. And so Jesus said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. Okay. Point blank period. So simple. So basically what they're saying is pay your taxes. Okay. That's, that's all, that's all he was saying. Avoid foolishness. Avoid, um, but how do I say it? Avoid small, meaningless battles. There's another scripture that talks about avoiding, uh, arguments with your adversary unless they lock you up and throw you in jail and you have to go t to the court and pay a fee it talks about that in the bible and you can look it up basically what the most high is saying is is it worth it to argue with the, those in authority and be thrown in jail lose your house uh lose your family cause a bunch of problems for no reason when you can just do follow the law follow the law because what he's saying is there's something, it's temporary. It's temporary. There's something much more bigger that's coming. And so these Hebrew Israelite men make excuses. Well, uh, we don't want to spend, you know, thousands of dollars on a wedding. Okay, I understand that. I understand that very much. But it takes nothing to go to the court and sign a piece of paper and get married. That's it. But they won't do that. These Hebrew Israelite men who believe in multiple wives, they won't go to the court and get married legally. Because they know if they do it that way, they can't have multiple wives. They don't truly have to commit that way. You know what I'm saying? And so by just having a, a little, oh, this is my wife now. No, that's not your wife. That's just a woman that you're fornicating with. And you're calling it a blessed marriage. That's, that's not so. Because the Most High did not originally ordain multiple wives. Like I said before, Adam and Eve. We can go back. That's the foundation. I don't care if you told me about Solomon. I don't care if you told me about Jacob or Abraham or anybody. Adam and Eve beats all of those arguments. Okay. So when you, they're talking about they 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 can't 
you know, they don't want to do the heathen marriage. That's fine. I'm not telling you to get on your knee. I'm not telling you to bow down to a woman. I'm telling you, do it the legal way. Do it the right way. Honor the most high. And you're not going to honor him by having multiple women. Fornicating with them and calling it marriage. You're disgracing and making a mockery of marriage. You're leading yourself and those women into sin. There's no way around it. And a lot of people aren't going to like this, but it's the truth. It's not nation building. It's making a mess because then those, not only are those women baking back and forth, but there's confusion amongst their children. Now their children are going to have that negative energy that's in that home and their children are going to be bickering back and forth. You see the same thing with Rachel and Leah's children and, uh, Bella and, um, the other handmaid, Zilf, Zilfa, all four of those women, all of their children bicker back and forth. You can see that Joseph and his brothers. There's nothing new under the sun. So what makes you think that your household will be an ex, uh, an exemption? You think you can live in a house with other women and somebody's not going to be the favorite? Somebody's not going to get more special treatment than the, than the others? You think that some children are not going to be treated better? You think that the children are all going to get along all the time? No, it's not so. You need to look at this. Your house is going to be full of negative energy, unclean spirits, and chaos. And the Most High will not be there. Because again, he's not the author of confusion. So we need to stop letting these men make excuses. Stop letting them use the Bible to find loopholes and made up scriptures in their own interpretations. It's time for women to have backbones and stand up for themselves and do what's right for the most high. And a lot, I, just, I see it all the time. I see it too much. You know, women being docile and weak and it's just, it's disgusting. And it's, I just don't know where it comes from. Like, why are you acting like this? Why are you acting desperate for a man? For, for a man. That doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> so i mean i guess that's pretty much all i wanted to discuss in this video i mean it's just time we are in the last days it's time for us to get it together get it right now because we're not we don't know what's going to happen in the next few weeks we don't know what's going to happen in the next couple months as we've noticed 2020 was uh, unexpected for a lot of people and 2021 is only going to get worse people have this lie that things are going to get better and anybody who is studying anybody who's in tune with the most high knows what's coming knows that it's not going to get better so if you are not living right now if your house is not in order right now then i i can't tell you that anything good is coming to you because there's really no excuse not to have your house in order at this point. It's no excuse not to living right. It's time out to stop listening to these camps. It's time out to stop listening to lies. And you have to listen to the word of God. Before it's too late. Because pretty soon it's going to be too late. And I guess that's all I want to say. So I'll end this video right here. And... I say shalom to you guys and take care.